Please close the doors. Thank you. There are still seats in the balcony if the balcony fills, and the ushers tell you that we will have seats in the atrium out here.
Amen. Amen. We're here in the loving memory of our children. Chadney, Coy, Kara, and Kaylee. Amen. Amen. We're going to start with a procession. They're going to play a video for us. And we'll continue with our service. Thank you.
one to him, Lord. Lord. The Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised. Yes. The Lord is good yes. and he's worthy to be praised. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to read the scripture. The scripture I have comes from Isaiah 61 and I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearts, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the blessing of the Lord that he might be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. same words that Jesus himself spoke before he started his ministry. And that is also the ministry that I'm involved in called Inner Healing and Deliverance. Amen. Amen. Our next will be a poem from DeAndre Smith. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about the faithful. The world was not worthy of them. And so this is faith to me. An undeniable, indescribable, unimaginable, not even tangible belief. When pain is way down deep, when continual tears trap your speech, when you lay awake and cannot sleep, this is when you have to believe. When you exhale and still can't breathe, when your worst nightmare isn't a dream, feel his comfort surrounding me. I pray to God to grant you peace, faith. I cry out for thee. We stand on mountains we cannot see. He is strength when you are weak. Just look at the name he chose for thee. Faith. You're optimistic, resilient, loving, nurturing, irrefutable, indestructible mother. Faith. I pray to God for thee. Faith is what gave them peace. Very beautiful point. We're going to have words from me, Faith, and Machete. I'm going to be reading for faith at this time with the words that she had from her heart for her children. My little big man, you were so strong, unique, and smart. You were a builder, always making and creating things. I loved your tight hugs, and you would pick me up while hugging me, smiling at me and joking around together. I'll miss the times I'd be laying in the bed and you would flop on the bed and lay there with me. I know your love and I'll always love you. My beloved Cara Bear, creative, beautiful, confident, a go-getter. Love doing and trying new things, whether it be food or going different places. Princess Koi loved wearing her dresses and getting her hair done. 
She always wanted to wear her hair curled and down. I would always tell her, Coy, push up your glasses looking like a little old lady. She loved to be the center of attention. My sweet pea is strong, lovable, loves cuddling with me. She was glued to my hip. She loved the water. Kaylee had really good coordination and loved to sing. I'm so happy we had a chance to do so many things together. My dear babies, I love you all. You all were unique in your own way. I always encourage each of you to be your own person, to be a leader and not a follower, and to stand up for what's right. And faith, you were successful as a wonderful mother. Thank you. We're going to now have another point by Justin Banks and an I in speech and Taisha Hapsta. Point by Justin Banks, I in speech and Taisha Hapsta. Here? They okay? That's going to be a while then.
then we met back in elementary school, cussed her out immediately, started talking, saw we had things in common, and just took off from there and became best friends. I just remember the days we just sit for hours just playing video games, having the time of our lives. I miss him. He was just always there for me. We could just always talk. Could sit and talk about anything, laughing, joking. I miss you, Chad. I love you, man. Love you. Friends forever, even apart, we pray together from the first star. We laugh, we cry, we play hide and seek. One thing I'm going to miss through the dark is hands we speak. We're friends by blood, but family by heart. I never knew we, that we would be apart. It breaks my heart to say goodbye. It makes me want to break down and cry. Tony and Katie, this is not the end. A long time from now, I see you, my best friend. Okay. We're going to now have acknowledgments by Chelsea Clark.
Good job, Chelsea. Hallelujah. Now we're going to have remarks. For anyone who would like to come and bring forth remarks, we're going to have a limit. May y'all say limit. One minute. And we know in certain people's time that, hey man, one minute, amen. To the family, you have my condolences, you have my prayers today. To the family, this is still the day that the Lord has made, and He wants us to rejoice and be glad in Him. And God wants us to know today that He's still the God that comforts us in all of our troubles. While you're brokenhearted, He stands close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, He's carrying you close to His heart. One day, he promises to wipe away every tear from your eye and take away all the pain that you are suffering on this earth. For I am your Father, and I love you, even as I love my Son, Jesus Christ. For in Jesus my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. And oh yes, he did come to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you I'm not counting your sin. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death, it was the ultimate expression of my love for you. God is saying to you today, He gave up everything He loves, that He might gain your love. If you would only receive the gift of my Son, Jesus Christ, today, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home, and I will throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been Father, and I always will be. My question is to you today, will you be my child? I'm waiting for you. Love your dad, the Almighty God. And as I go to my feet, I just want to say, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today is a great day. The scripture says, God so loved the world. God bless you.
because in all things we have to give God praise. And I tell you, when you look at the house, God has shown his love in such a time as this. We have to give God praise. Nothing is in vain. And so I want to encourage the people, the family, and friends that after all of this is over, after everything is gone and died down, continue to love on the family, continue to gather around them, and continue to love on them. Brother CJ, we bless you. We continue to pray for the family. God bless you. My family's request, only five more, okay? I want to hear y'all say it again. How many? Five. Okay. This is a whole group. Okay. That's, that's very smart. Um, good morning. Um, we're all Karen's good friends, you know. We love her. We love her whole family. Thank you for giving her to us. Cause I know, I know, I know, I know you. 
church say amen. amen. My name is Pastor Maurice L. Hartwig. Many of you might know me as Pastor Mo. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ to the family, friends, loved ones, to, to each family, to the pastor of this house. Um, I've had the displeasure to bury almost eight children in Detroit from violence this year alone. Uh, you might have seen them in the news, a lot of those home going services. So I felt uh, I could not sit home without coming to pay my respects. I'm the founding pastor of the Body of the Youth Army Church, leader of the LRP movement. And as the LRP movement, we stand with perfect unity, solidarity with this family, each individual family, and friends that say that live in peace, we are behind you. We pray for you. My wife is at home praying for all of us right now. In Jesus' name, I've seen this many times. We've been made to do it for a night. No rest is coming. Coming. That's it for now for for remarks. Amen. Sorry again, but we're on time restraints. Amen. By request of the family. Amen. This is always the hard part. Amen. But hallelujah. Now we're going to have our Obit reading by my sister, Dina Harris. Let's give her a hand as she makes a word. Mr. Chad B. C. J. Allen, Jr., Ms. Kara W. Allen, Ms. Kaylee Green, and Ms. Coy Green passed unexpectedly September 21, 2016, at the ages of 19, 17, 5, and 4. The children are survived by their parents, Chaddy Allen, Sr., Faith Whitney, and Ms. Kaylee and Coy's father. Their great-grandmothers, Elise Wilson and Tabitha Allen Mahoon. Their grandparents, Apostle Fred Harris, Kathleen Harris, Larry R. Gratton, Angela D. Allen, and honorary grandparents, Barbara and Eddie Gaston. They are predeceased by their great-grandmother, Rediva Gratton, and grandparents, Woodrow Green and Tom Lee Green. Chaddy was born in Detroit on August 7, 1997 to Chaddy Allen Sr. and Faith Whitney. He graduated from Southfield High School in 2015. He excelled as a student participating in an art program that gave him the opportunity to have his work exhibited downtown in the GM building. He attended a one-year program at Stax Howard earning a certificate in digital media arts. He enjoyed playing anime, paintball, and video games. He worked part-time at KFC, and he enjoyed making many movies in his spare time. Carol was born in Detroit on April 25, 1999, to Chatney Allen Sr. and Faith Whitney. She was a senior at Southfield High at AT&T High School. As an active high school student, Carol was a member of the National Honor Society, cheerleader, an equipment manager for the football team, and she was taking honors AP courses in preparation to attend college immediately after high school. She was actively involved in the community, volunteering to feed the homeless. Coy Green was born in Novi on October 28, 2010, to Faith Whitney. She was a first grader at St. Sebastian Catholic School. She enjoyed attending her new school. She liked her teachers, had many friends, and she was learning to speak Spanish. She loved to dress up, modeling her pretty outfits. She was a cheerleader and a ballet dancer. She enjoyed drawing and going away on trips. Kaylee Green was born in Novi on September 5, 2012 to Faith Whitney. She was a preschooler at St. Sebastian Catholic School. Her favorite things to do 
were singing, ballet dancing, cheering, eating macaroni and cheese, and playing outside. from Lucille Cole. Giving out his God was in my life and to his son Jesus Christ. There's a scripture that says, when my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Also in the word it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth.
Total praise. Total praise. Sometimes the hurt and the pain get you at a place where you can't do nothing but give. Total praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We need some people who are parked in illegal areas that need to really move their cars. Amen. I don't know the specifics, but make sure the ones who are parked in cars in illegal areas they need to move them or there'll be an issue. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord today? Is it good, Pastor Harris? He's so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, say nothing can separate us from his love. Amen. Amen. Now I'm introduce my brother, Apostle Ron Shepherd. He'll be bringing the eulogy. Amen. All the way from Texas. Hallelujah. 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 I kind of like sometimes I don't have a mic or cord up to me. Come on now. Hallelujah. Let's shout out our pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get on your feet. Hallelujah. When young people die, when they're separated and the bell leaves and it rests, they go somewhere. I'm rejoicing today because I heard something last week. You didn't hear. I'm not mourning today. I have a great concern today, but I'm not mourning. Great concern. And it's not for these four babies. You better hear me. It's not for the four babies. Not for the poor babies. Hello, Pastor Harris. Pastor Harris. Chatney, I've never met you, man. I've never met you. I usually come up here and pump home back down. I never met you, brother. Give me some today. My pastor. Give me a little postcard. That's my son. My pastor. You did nothing wrong. Look at me. You did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Lift up your head, brother. God is about to use you. You're going to put the devil to a shame. How dare he touch your baby? Hey, Kandarama Koshe. Religious ritual. Babies are dying. People are perishing. And we show up time after time and nothing changes. Something got to change. I'm tired of this crap. You be religiously correct. I'm tired of this crap. You hear people walking around saying, God called his angels home. That's a lie! That's a lie! Murder is not a melody! Get that mess from! Murder is not of God! Where y'all get that crap from? Satan and his dumb angels did that! Too many times we so 
go through these things. And we want theatrics. Sing me a song make me feel good. God is good. Ain't it amazing how we can pull him out when it's convenient to us? I know somebody, baby, y'all. Faith. Pull that God when we see your pretty face. I know somebody, baby, faith. I told you God will rock your world in a few minutes. My concern is not for them. My concern is for all the people I see. See, in this, my heart's heavy. The heaviness is not here. Not quiet when Apostle called me at 3 something in the morning. That was my wake up call last week. I cried. Man, Chadney was dear to me. That was a brilliant young brother. Chadney, I'll tell you, your song was brilliant. Man, he used to do these little games, all these little things, and I would always ask him a riddle. And Chadney didn't like not knowing the answer. He'd come back up there, is that it? I said, no, that ain't it. Oh, man, oh, man. He said, Pastor Ron, is that the answer to him? I'm like, no, man. Beautiful brother. Aspirations of life. But a vessel in waiting. So you see bodies of today, memories of yesterday. What did the Holy Spirit show you about tomorrow? Uh-oh. What did he show you concerning him about what his purposes were? Not your earthly place. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, Carol. Oh, that was a beautiful baby. Beautiful baby. I saw one tell tell a bow in a hand up on one leg like this. I said, girl, what you doing? I was practicing. <laughs> saw the chili outfit. I said, can you eat turn on flip? No, not yet. I gotta go to gymnastics. I said, what kind of chili do you you can't turn on flip? <laughs> Caught running out, she grabbed your leg, always in your left, just smiling. Beautiful smile. And Katie, that was not a half do. That baby couldn't destroy it. <laughs> they would fix it. Caught me looking at him, trying to help him. Can it be tearing down? It wasn't a hat to see couldn't tear it. You need to let a merry heart in times like these do it good. It gets in and it produces a medicine in you. Satan would love it to have you come in and allow the spirit of grief to rest upon you. That it would open a door to heaven and oppression. Devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. The blood of Yeshua, Jesus, I invoke it against you. Get off of the people of Elohim. Get off of them. Get off of him. He's trespassing. He's trespassing. I'm so honored to be here. Out of these conditions. But that family loved me enough to ask me. One of the greatest compliments I've ever heard in my life. He called and said, Apostle Ron, would you do the uh, this word, the apple uh, eulogy? And I said, yes. In my mind, I said, no. I want to be honest with you. I love them, baby. I love them for real. Just showing up now. Been now. Been now. It wasn't a one day, one week thing. Been now. Seen her struggles. Heard of this young man. Prayed with him. Counseled with the brother that's in jail. That's still a soul. Don't get that twisted. See, it's times like these that bring out of you what you've hidden all this time. See, you can squat this stuff down and few, fool a few people. But when tragedy happens, what's in your heart really comes to the surface. Pay, pay close attention to who's touching you, who's whispering to you, who's whispering to you. God ain't sinning all the way. You see the physical tragedy, how sad it is. Hear me, Chapman. 
Watch the people that come around you, bro. They're going to pat you. We there for you. God bless you. Why were you two months ago? I'll tell you, you might not like me. I didn't come to put on the show. First and foremost, I'm a servant of the Most High of the God. First and foremost, that's it. Without him, I'm nothing. People talk about making him first place. He's all to me. There's nothing left. Young people, I see you sitting up there. You better hear me and understand something. This is reality. See, back in my day, 55, I'm going to date myself. I used to watch some black and white movies. And seemingly everything that happened in these movies, there was a solution for it. There'd be a monster that come to a woman. <laughs> Somebody get us a, <laughs> some other pterosaur. And you know what the answer was, Chad? Somebody was slapping. It's crazy. It cured everything. A good old slap. I need to tell some of y'all. You just got slapped. Satan blinds the minds of men that they can't hear the revelatory truth of Yeshua Jesus. He gets you involved in the circle of life, the American dream. Let me get mine. And you forget about him. We only pull him out when it's convenient. Sometimes, under the law, he allows you to be goaded, stuck. Paul kicked against that thing. That's why he knocked him off his beat and said, Saul, Saul, what kick us out against the prick? The law was meant to poke you from behind to get you in line. But in the new covenant, we'll live by his love. And sometimes when we don't want to hear, when we don't want to fall, his love, here comes a goal. And it sticks you where it hurts. See, they would poke them lightly first. And when they did not want to mind, they would actually stick it into the skin to make you get in line. The Bible says the law is for the lowest. Now, I'm going to put all your religious faces on in here today. Everybody stays up in here today. <laughs> Everybody stays up in here. Don't even start lying. You don't understand the magnitude of this day. The media wants to cover it. You get the ratings up. No concern for the virus. Be the first to the story. So we can get some shine out of this. Don't even know these babies. I don't know man nothing but to love. You need to take inventory today. What is your life but a vapor? The Bible says it's here today. Go on tomorrow. Why are you taking thought for tomorrow? You don't even know you'll be here. The baby didn't plan this. But Satan planned it, and it wasn't all at once. See, what you don't understand, he starts early. It's called principalities. In your mother's womb, your early development years, he plants things there. So even though someone tells you that you can be successful, you can be someone, inside of you, you no, you can't. That's a lie. You'll never be nothing. You'll never be nobody. You're a failure. They're going to reject you again. That's coming up on the inside. While the word's trying to give me a principality. That's what happened to that young man. That young man, I'm going to tell y'all, some of y'all might not believe this. He wasn't smart enough to do this. So you might as well push down the anger, the bitterness, the unforgiveness. Forgive! I'm going to tell y'all, that brother wasn't smart enough to do this. But over years, images hit it. You're nothing. You're nobody. 
you reject it. They're going to leave you. And it pushed him to a point where the first thing he did let you know. Satan kept snowballing it. I know, like I say, everybody up in this state, you've never thought or did anything like that. Well, let me tell you something. At nine years old, I got tired of getting beat, getting off the bus every day. Boy, chasing me to the house. You think it ain't significant? I was going home one day, and my father, six three and a half million, eighty pounds, cussed me out and said, "That boy run into the house again, I'll beat you." I'm nine. Don't tell me what you won't do. Why are you thinking about that man that soul that's locked up? Yes, a travesty, but he didn't do it. He was processed and programmed to do it. You'd be amazed at what you've been processed and programmed to do right now. So I go to the house, I'm walking halfway up this road. And I'm looking at this big boy, two old, three years older than me. I said, you don't leave me alone, I'm go to the house and get a knife and cut your throat. I'm mad. He's like 11 or 12. Before I could get the words out, he went in the house, came back, and he standing on the porch with a butcher knife looking at me. Now, man, fear hits. Panic hits. And I run to the house crying. This is reality. Nine years old. I grab a gun out of the closet. My dad used to hunt deer. And I could shoot. We grew up with guns. Walked the streets. We went hunting people. We hunted animals. I came around the corner of the house. Bolted, took the safety off, and went just like this. And the only thing that stopped me was the gentleman next door going, Put that gun down! I got slapped. Nine years old. Nobody taught me how to kill. Nobody taught me murder. But rejection early on from my mother put that thing down. It hurt to be rejected. Grew up in pots. It hurt to be poor. But the minute he did it, all I could see was dropping him like a hot rock. Nine and you're looking at a grown man that Satan had worked on all them years to what he thought he was going to get victory over. Satan is stupid. He don't know what he released. Because the Bible said if he hadn't known, had him known, he wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. See, there's no shut up inside that veil, inside that body, was life for you and me. And the only way out was to crush, cut that flesh. This is innocent blood. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Satan kind of looked like he done messed up again. I looked at this, and I looked at this, and I saw the picture. Yeah, you see bodies. I see vessels. When they came into the earth, now, glad I mean, I tell you, me, I told my wife I got five kids. I told one none of y'all playing. <laughs> hey, what playing? Mama was good. And the next thing you know, they said, Miss Shepard, you pregnant. They weren't playing. But they came from Elohim with a purpose. Yes. At his vessel. I told my children, I don't own any one of y'all. Ezekiel tells me all souls are mine. That means he just used me and my wife to create the vessels that he could occupy. These vessels belong to the Most High. His purposes were for them. I know moms and dads have plenty, but his purposes were for them. So what actually happened? The same thing that happened when Yeshua showed up. Satan preemptively tried to go ahead and stop his ministry. Apostle and Pastor has been praying for years to leave a legacy. The four vessels you see here from those two.
This is not have all that stuff. I'm gonna shoot straight with you, I'm gonna give you my heart. That's all I have. I don't have anything. If I didn't come to put on the shot, I gotta give you my heart. Because if I can reach somebody's heart today, that don't need God, young man. Need manpower. I know you got your football jerseys on, but he needs manpower in the kingdom. You're going to leave here today one of two ways. You're going to be a carrier today. And I wrote this down. It was so powerful to me when he said, we all will be carriers when we leave today. What will you carry from here today? I want you to think about this. What are you going to carry from this? Did you just come to another funeral and say, I will? What are you going to take from this? What are you going to carry? Will you carry the same chaos, fear, and paranoia that's been released on this country? That's all you're dealing with out there. Fear got released. If I have some time, I'll tell you when. And it's been spread like cancer ever since. Fear creates paranoia. Murder. Murder started in Genesis. Jesus told some Sadducees and Pharisees, you are your father the devil. And it says he was a murderer from the beginning. That's why I say get off the brother that's locked up. Pray for him. Pray for him. If you can't, something up with you. Something up with you. Now watch this. Jesus healed all these people. Delivered all these people and his hand bleed out of breath. Pushing himself up to breathe. Pushing himself up. Look at that. I healed your family. I saved your life. I gave you sight. I gave you another leg. I gave you your son back. And I ain't cussing at him. Throwing stuff at him. Mocking him. While he's hanging and bleeding down. I never read where he retaliated. He looked out like I'm looking out. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yeah. If you hang on to that anger, that spirit of retaliation, yeah. it will crush you. Pray and release it. Yes. It'll do more damage to you than it does to him. When you hold it, you give Satan something to work with. Yes. Now that's one rule. Will you carry that? Oh, here comes the second. This is for the saints. That one that know they're looking. That know that this ain't the end. It was just the beginning. This was cross for me. Now will you carry it? Peace that our beloved Jesus left. Faith, which worketh by love. If Joe could do it, if Yahshua Jesus could do it, and you're a saint, Christian, why can't you? Yeah, it hurts. I cried too. But being bitter and angry ain't gonna help nothing. I refuse to give Satan and his kingdom something to work with. I refuse to. My job today was to encourage the family. Encourage to inspire with hope, expectation. Courage and confidence. To give support. To stimulate. Here's the problem we're dealing with in this country. Detroit, Texas, and everywhere. This is what happened. And we show up on days like this, and automatically we want to pull God out when it's convenient. Come on now. This is what we, as the people, have done to him. We rejected his love.
circumvented his laws and replaced his church. this church. I got news for most of y'all. These box buildings, I don't care how fallacious and big they are, he did not come to stop. I don't care what your flavor is on the outside, pick you one. Church of the Frozen Chosen, C or E, A, B, C, I don't care what it is. He didn't come to start those. He sent his son to save the lost. And the store sons back on the video. But we replaced that. Everybody got their flavor. I'm this and I'm that. I'm so glad these babies didn't come up there now. I'm going to tell you what in a minute. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got our government officials. Put politicians, this organization, that organization. They want to come in at times like these and help. Get out of my face. I'm Mr. So-and-so from the such and such and such. Let's get together. Get out of my face. Unless you're coming to tell me something by way of the Holy Spirit. That's what I want to do. I got this for them. You can't legislate or regulate sin. You can take the guns off the streets, take the knives out of the house, but them demons still gonna be there. You can build prisons until every state is overcrowded with them, but the spirits are still gonna be there. You can't regulate what you can't see. The only thing they understand is the blood of Yeshua Jesus. But see, in order for this to be effective, he needs converted people. I didn't say church members, converted people. Most of you look at your lives and say, I've sinned this and I've sinned and you're trying to categorize and think of all these sins before you come to him. He didn't ask you to mention all of them. The sin he's speaking of, he's telling you, you're going the wrong way. You become your own God. You don't want to hear me. That's what happened in Genesis. And he said, people in place, I love this brother right here. I just met him, Pastor Bing, incredible man, strength. The things he generosity just gave open the doors to him. You, to... you see the attitude. That's why you tell some of y'all, look past the dirt cup and see the man's heart. My Bible tells me to know no man after the flesh. When I saw that brother, I saw his heart. I said, I can't wait for my son to hook up with you. You can't legislate a regulate fear. Fear and love are present today. My nasty, filthy self back in the day. My nasty, filthy self back in the day. That he gave relief, his only begotten son, that you and I could have life and life more eternal. Yes. Look at here. This is one thing I know today. I'm going to even get to my daughter ready. I was awake last night at 245. I wrote all this stuff down. I'm like, well, what do you want to say? These are your people. I don't know what they do. So at 245, I get up. He says, I have anointed you to preach the gospel. I'm like, what? So I get up in the morning. That's Isaiah 61. I'm like, okay, you're a fine game, so here we go. 
and I wrote it down. And all of a sudden, my daughter, who drove 18 hours to be here to read one scripture, gets up and reads the same verse. <laughs> same verse. That Elohim gave me at 2.45 last night. Tell me it ain't purpose on this. But are we going to waste the opportunity? Are you going to go back to the circle of life? Heard somebody say, come on, let's go get our trades on. Let's go celebrate life. I celebrate life. But I'm going to remind you of this. It's coming. It's coming. Will the rapture or this hazmat suit lay down? You just don't know when. Are you ready? Uh -oh. I hate to tell you, your favorite fan, Rich, Bentley or not, palatial place or not, singing high notes and living low lives is not. <laughs> your soul and your spirit is an important to our Father. He would have said a son if it wasn't so. Hear me today. Don't leave him without surrendering your life conversion to the Lord Jesus Christ. He allowed this for this. Don't leave here the same. Your flavor won't help. It takes true conversion. Holy Spirit has to reveal to you even who he is. No man can call him Lord, but by Holy Spirit. You just can't read the Bible and say, I know it. Holy Spirit has to go inside and reveal this is Yeshua, King of glory. Receive ye him. Yes, I will. Again, I say, I get so tired. This is my second film. Would you believe the first one, a young man I shot there? He was prophetically warned by that man right there not to get in the car. He was going to make a stop in three cities. He did it anyway. He was standing in the door and he got nine down. He was just banging, selling drugs, doing everything else. But they decided to put some angel wings on the t-shirt and halo his head and shoot game inside. Rest in peace. I had to tell him the truth. He said, you can't judge. The Bible says you're known by the fruit. How are you going to serve a holy God? Swinging game, saying. Getting your high on. Sipping, tripping, and tipping. Are you quiet? I'm going to tell you the truth. You just don't dial this up like you want to. It's been set. Now I'm going to get to the part I really want to get to. I really want to get to this. is for my baby, baby. And Chad, it out. Chad, man, you're going to have a Kool-Aid smile in a minute. This is hard. The two big ones, you see. Let the fruit and see of his Lord. Last Wednesday, we shut everything down. When something like this happens, you don't come in and pretend like you know what's going on. Satan will love everybody. When he first showed this to me, I saw a room divided and people on both sides were looking at each other going, quack, 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 quack. Get angry at each other. Stop asking why. You don't know it, neither do I. I walked out of my office that day, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. Yes. That's reserved for the Father. Amen. Because it, to understand that you have to see it through his eyes by purpose. I know I'm a little long and we'll cut it off. But you gotta hear this. Remember, I'm here to encourage. I like that part. That encouragement me to inspire with hope. That means something to look forward to. You hear that, friend? Chad, you hear that, man? 
That means something to look forward to. Hope! Wait. Courage and confidence. Your name is about to change. Faith, I know they call you faith, but your name is about to change. We have a lady in our ministry who said, Faith ain't faith till it's tested. That's it. How about that, Justin? Faith ain't faith till it's tested. Faith ain't faith. Till she tested. Great ministries are born out of anguish. Faith is your time, baby. I told y'all he messed up. He messed up. He messed up. Faith is your time. Chad, it's your time, man. Stop running, brother. It's your time. The king has need of you. Last year, we were in intercessory prayer. Young people just like y'all, they weren't thinking about that. Don't get me started on that. You mentioned her name, people get tight in their We were in prayer, a bunch of young people. They prayed concerning the Apostle Harris, Pastor Harris, Chadney, the family. Beautiful day the Holy Spirit speak to these young people. And all of a sudden, the gentleman that very rarely said anything stood up and spoke by the Holy Spirit. He's real soft spoken, he walks real slow, very seldom says anything. Now, to help you to understand this, we have a young man in our ministry, Wesley Sullivan. His wife was married and never had children. A gentleman prophetically spoke and said, I see a little round head boy. Make a long story clear. Two months later, she found out she's pregnant. Away with his ear. Now, after the first one, away with his ear. Now, after the first one, we were in prayer. You know, such a prayer again. While praying, the lady said, I see Wesley Fair, I see a little baby with two pigtails. I see two, two little girls with pigtails. Long story blessed, she ends up pregnant again. Didn't know who or what, but the baby was still born in the tank. Wesley was devastated. But he kept walking around. We're going to have a girl. We're going to have a girl. Well, one morning, I know Fry here somewhere. She got the sick hand up. That baby right there. The Lord spoke to her. I said, Wesley, I hear the Lord say, what I'm taking you and what I'm preparing you for. I couldn't send her now. But when you're ready, she's right here with me. She wrote in some notes. I need to tell you that the lady that's barren, little Abigail is here. Why do I say that? Sometimes people need a little proof. Not being believers. So again, we're going to set retract.
greater hope. Now watch, hope is in the future. Hope is in the future. Faith, your babies. Chad, look here, man. Chad, look, 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 look. Your babies, man, they in your future. They are not in your past. But it's conditional. They're with the Father. This is condition. It's not automatic. You got to know where your hearts are. Concerning Him, by way of the blood of Yeshua. What are you really concerning Him? Are you really saved? Have you been converted? If you haven't, I don't care what kind of chili outfit you use, what kind of poem you read. If you haven't been converted, You'll never see him again. Think about that one when you leave, young people. If you're not truly converted, I heard the Lord speak. They're with him. If you haven't been converted, you'll never see them again. That's hope. That's expectation. Play the video, DVD. I had young people in our ministry put this together right before we left. Like I said, they're dear to us. This is a song my son wrote um, right before my wife's grandmother's passed. Right after she passed, like the day before the funeral. He wrote the song in 10 minutes. Holy Spirit came upon him and he wrote it. And I want you to hear it. Especially the last one. Especially the last part, please. Especially that part. Today, when we leave, I know time's running really short. Get with Apostle Fred. Get with some of the real saved lady. Yes. Pastor Ben. Or go home and just say simply, Lord, I've been going the wrong way. Receive me. Receive me. I don't care what you've done. Where you been? Lord, receive me. Forgive me. Come into my life. Baptize me into you. I want to come home. You don't need no special person to do that. That's between you and the Father. Don't leave here today the same. Apostle Harris, Pastor Harris, Faith, Chad, I love y'all, man. I'm going to be glad the time when I come up there and we can get together. Probably brain like your son. We can kind of do some things like that. Don't let Satan destroy our society, destroy our children, while we got our heads buried in the sand of the cares of this life and the seasonless and riches. He's picking them off one at a time. This is nothing new. Lady, go up $2 to the police station. I got two dead kids in my back car, in the back of my car. She killed them. It's an epidemic. The cancer's growing. It's got to stop somewhere. Why not with you? Why not with you? All you got to do is surrender the Holy Spirit and do the rest. Surrender. Surrender. Play it, please.
happy we just real quick. I told you, Faith, that her name was going to change to 245 last night. Give me 30 seconds. I'll try to read it real quick. And I wrote this fast. He was saying, He said, Faith, you will be now known as a woman of war in the kingdom of Yeshua Jesus. Every true warrior receives scars in battle. Your scars did not take your beauty away. They will be reminders of your victory in this test. Then it says, faith ain't faith until it's tested. Apostle Fred and Prophetess Kathleen, this is now the manifestation of that which you ask God for. And he told me to write right after that in Isaiah 61. It's the very foundational scripture of the ministry that he gave you to. Faith is time to run. Run. You're now a woman of war. People didn't understand your demeanor when they came by to console you and you were consoling them. You're a woman of war. I heard the word judge this morning. Like the judges of Israel. Judge meaning justice for God's people. The women that are torn, broken down. Faith! Don't let the enemy have on faith. You're a woman of war. Go get them. Shadow. Don't ever doubt what the Father's called you to do. It has nothing to do with your background, where you came from, or what you thought you did. He didn't call you. Because you will qualify. He's going to qualify after you answer the call. My heart today is I pray that this whole said something that will cause someone in this audience to truly give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and stop playing, acting, and having church. He needs vessels today. He needs someone that he can pour into to pull out of. And with that, I say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah to the Most High King.
Paul Mayers come forward, please. Paul Mayers come. everyone please stand except for the immediate family. Everyone please stand except for the immediate family.
As the family proceeds out of here, we need to dismiss in an orderly manner. We want to dismiss the balcony first, because many of them are double parked. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Certainly the presence of the Lord has been here today. Amen. Once the balcony is cleared, we will begin dismissing the side and we'll come to the center. If you need to sit down, you're very much welcome to do that. We'll dismiss from the sides, coming to the center. In an orderly fashion. Please hold them here on the floor. The balcony needs to get cleared. Thank you. 